guys, in this video we're going to go over the photoelectric effect and how it showed us that a light behaves as a particle and not just a wave, okay? So, we know that light is a wave. We know it's a wave because it gets diffracted, okay? We know it gets diffracted, it spreads around an obstacle because of the Young's double slit experiment. So if we remember from Young's double slit experiment, what we have as a source of light, we know that the waves diffract and then if our waves are coherent, and again, what coherent means, means that they had a constant phase difference and the same frequency or wavelength, we will see a pattern on the screen, an interference pattern on the screen, where we had constructive interference and destructive interference making our bright and our dark fringes. So that's how we know light is a wave. So we know light is a wave. Again, because it diffracts. The photoelectric effect was showing that light behaves as particles, okay? So what they did was they had a surface of a metal. So we have a surface of a metal, and we know metal is made of our positive ions and our delocalized free electrons. And what they did was they shone light at the metal, and they wanted to see could we get these electrons on the surface of the metal to be emitted from that surface of the metal. So it's called the photoelectric effect. So if light was a wave, this light wave would be continuous energy. So what that means, let's say for example, I shone red light at my sample. If I showed red light at the surface of my metal, I know that it doesn't matter what the energy of the light is because it's continuous energy, it's constantly supplying energy. Eventually, these electrons can just keep accumulating, keep gathering the energy until they have enough energy to completely escape the surface of the metal, and that would be my free electron then. So what they saw was that either an electron is emitted immediately or not at all. Okay? So what they saw was either this energy of light has enough energy, this wave of light has enough energy to completely remove an electron from the surface and it's going to happen straight away, or what's going to happen is it didn't happen at all because our energy of our light was too low. Okay? So maybe they had to increase the energy of the light and we know that visible light is split into colors of the rainbow. So Roy G. Biff. Okay? So red light is always going to be our least energy. Sorry, red light is always our least energy because it's towards the infrared part of the spectrum and violet light is the one with the most energy because it's towards the UV region of the spectrum. So again, this is our visible spectrum. Okay, so what they said on then is that light can't be a wave, right? Because if it was a wave, it shouldn't matter how much energy that color has, how much energy that wavelength has. Because we know the energy of light is equal to H times F, Planck's constant times the frequency. Or you could say H times C over lambda, Planck's constant times the speed of light over its wavelength. So it shouldn't matter what wavelength of light we shine on the surface because it's continuous energy. So that says our electron should eventually get emitted from the surface. But because it was never emitted or it happened straight away, what they said was it means that light cannot be a wave. They're saying that light must be a particle. So what they said instead was light must be made of these particles called photons. And these photons are discrete. So discrete is the way I say in specific, like a certain amount. So these photons are specific. They contain packets of energy. So packets of EM energy, electromagnetic energy. And either the energy of that photon is greater than something called the work function. So if it's greater than the work function, we are going to get an electron emitted from the surface. So we will get one of those electrons emitted from the surface. But if it is less than the work function, we're not going to get electron emitted from the surface. And what the work function is, it's the minimum amount of energy we need to remove an electron from the surface of the metal, okay? And that work function is specific, it's different for different types of metals. So again, if our energy of light is greater than that work function, that minimum amount of energy we need to completely remove an electron from the surface of the metal, we do get the photoelectric effect, we do get an electron emitted from the surface. But if the energy of the light is less than the work function, then we're not going to get an electron emitted. 
Okay. So that's again what they said was that because either electron is emitted straight away or not at all, what that shows us light cannot be a wave. Because if it was a wave, it's continuous energy, and eventually that electron could just keep gathering the energy it needs to be emitted. But if that energy of light is less than the work function, it doesn't matter how long we shine this light on it, that electron is never going to be emitted. And what they said was it's a one-to-one -one interaction. So what that means is one photon will cause one electron emitted. If we have another photon, a packet of electromagnetic radiation, packet of electromagnetic energy, one photon here, we're going to get another electron emitted if its energy is greater than the work function. Okay? So again, how we can do this math now is we said that the energy of light is equal to HF. So if the energy of light is greater than the work function, we are going to get an electron emitted. So the electron emitted then is going to come off of that extra energy, and that extra energy is going to be its kinetic energy. Or sometimes you might see it as written as EK. So what we're saying now is HF is our energy of our light. It's going to be equal to whatever the work function is plus the kinetic energy, or one half of m times v squared. So the mass of electron times the speed it comes off with squared. So sometimes you might see this all called the threshold frequency. So energy, because this work function is the minimum of energy, you might also see it written as h times f, and that's called your threshold frequency, the minimum frequency that that light ray has to have to get an electron emitted from the surface of the metal. So again, that's how we figured out that light behaves both as a wave, because again of our interference effect, or as a particle, because we know that from the photoelectric effect. So hopefully you find this video useful, and then just click the link below to get signed up to our lessons.